So, so since there was a request for problem uh, question 12, let me start with the question 12 and I'll come back to uh, back loop around and see which one or two questions we'll look at. So this is question 12 and um, yeah. And I will tell you that it, um, this is, is written in a very particular way. It's written as a tutorial style question. And uh, part of this, uh, you are meant to simple, you are meant to follow the directions. And a biggest part of which is that uh, the answers you are calculating here, it's actually going to be wrong answer. As the question itself tell, tells you, um, it says the exact calculation will give you the tunneling probability of 0 0.378. Um, so, <laughs> and the number you calculate here will be uh, much less, like uh, by a factor of two less, uh, not exactly a factor of two, you have to do the calculation. So, so you are calculating a number that's uh, not actually correct, but I think of following this calculation, even, which, uh, even though it's wrong, I think it builds a better intuition than staring at this formula which your textbook derives and, you know, it's not wrong. But, but you know, if you are going to look at uh, section 7.6, it's something where I would recommend that you set aside the whole day so that you can take the time to actually uh, follow along the actual arguments that they are working through. They do work through all the details and it's, uh, it's good for you to follow, I think. I think uh, if you take the time to do that, it'll add a lot to your understanding of quantum mechanics. But in terms of, um, so, you know, uh, when people are working on homework, sometimes you don't have a whole day to study one section in depth. And um, if uh, basically all you're doing is uh, figuring out uh, equation 7.73, and then uh, <laughs> figuring out either equation 7.80 or 7.81, depending on uh, which level of approximation um, is justified, then like, these formulas don't really do a great job of building your intuition. So, so that's the purpose of this uh, question 12, um, which is having you do, frankly, wrong estimate, but an estimate that is easier to understand intuitively and walking you through the calculation. And even though the answer that you will get and the answer the system will grade as correct will be wrong, um, you will see how, um, how that's to, I hope you will see the connection to the correct result, correct detailed result that you will see derived in the textbook. So with that intro, let me um, go through this uh, tutorial. It says, um, I think uh, I'm just going to write things on the board here. Because uh, in terms of calculation, it's actually not complicated. <laughs> it's uh, in terms of um, making sure you do exactly what you should do, not trying to get the right answer. <laughs> so it says, calculation of tunneling probably is fairly involved. That's what I was saying. It involves calculation through two-step potentials, <laughs> which I guess we are not doing this semester, <laughs> um, not in detail, and it's not in lecture. And uh, some of the coefficients are eliminated from the start with the singles cannot be eliminated. I think all the coefficients um, with the two-step potentials there end up being five uh, unknown coefficients of which one you can eliminate because that's the incident flux, but there are four as compared to two. So that's the complexity of the system. Um, so what the purpose of this question is, is we can do a simple rule of thumb estimate, which will be quick and still good enough <laughs> to give you a fair intuition for the tunneling phenomena. So um, yeah, as I read this, let me sketch this out. In reflecting from step potential, you saw that when the potential barrier height u naught is greater than the instant particle energy E, the general solution in the region, so let me start sketching this. Um, so imagine, so this is my reference line for um, energy equal to zero. So, you have some 
um, incident wave of energy E, um, energy E. So this is my energy graph of the instant particle. Uh, let me draw my potential. Um, so in the incident region, pot my potential is zero. And at, let's say X equals zero is where my potential potential comes up to its value of U naught. And I drew it here so that the potential barrier is higher than the instant energy. Then the kind of wave function solution that you've seen in the previous tutorial set of questions is that in the region one, let me give the region labels, you have a sinusoidal or oscillating solution that you express in terms of complex exponential so that you can write the solution in terms of um, instant wave A times E to the plus IKX. And there's a reflected wave that I won't sketch, uh, but that has a form of B times E to the minus IKX. And, and what this sentence is saying is that this solution, as it enters into the region two, it enters um, in this region, the, this holds the second derivative of the Schrodinger, the, the wave function, according to the Schrodinger equation, this becomes, um, yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> remember the forms from memory. Uh, I think it looks like two M times U naught of minus E over uh, H bar squared. Psi. And the key thing here is that this coefficient here um, is positive. And this coefficient here being positive, it, um, it causes the form of the wave solution to be uh, this form that's given in the uh, text here. Uh, it, the wave function solution takes the form of real exponential plus minus um, x. And uh, in the tutorial question that you went through, we said, we picked out just the um, just the one with the minus sign as the solution that uh, that won't blow up to infinity at as x goes to infinity. So in the example that you in the tutorial question that you looked at, this wave function would have now decayed. Uh, well, I'm not sketching sketching this quite right because uh, there shouldn't be any kings. Um, so uh, this is how your wave function solution looked like. Uh, the, yeah, shouldn't cross it here. So the wave function in region two took the form of uh, C e to the minus uh, K two X. That's uh, what you saw in our previous question, uh, where A, so uh, ignore the exact letter I'm using for coefficient, A, C doesn't matter. It's the normalization constant. Um, so for the solution where exponent is negative, you have an exponential decay for the wave function. So this sketch is um, what I'm describing in words here. Now, for this particular question, it's saying for an electron of some kinetic energy, so this is my E, incident on a potential barrier of height. This is my U naught. So it's gonna be, um, you see that the height is higher than the kinetic energy. So we are gonna have this exact situation. Um, answer the questions below. Uh, so part A already tells you what, what approximation to use. And I'm again saying, um, admitting that this is not gonna be the correct solution, but it will be an approximation that, uh, that will be within an order of magnitude. So approximating your wave function solution into this form, uh, which I was already hinting at. So uh, really the only thing that might simplify some of the writing is to identify this with my K2. Um, we are ignoring, and this is the approximation we are making. We are ignoring the solution with the positive exponent, which um, as you will see in the textbooks, the exact solution, it's not ignored. It, it is there and it is, it is a significant. 
bind the distance x inside the barrier where psi of x has dropped to 0 0.36 of initial value at x equals zero. So that um, so this is a sort of rather simple calculation. So this is where my x is equal to zero. So um, I think I already have some sense of the expression for psi of x equals zero. It's gonna be a times e to the minus k2 times zero. So, oh, that's just gonna be a. So um, where it's saying uh, psi of x has a drop to 0 0.36 of initial value, it's saying um, find the value of x, find the x such that psi of x is 0 0.36. A. And I have the analytical expression for psi of x, at least the approximate version that we are using, that's equal to, um, so A times e to the minus k2 uh, x. Okay, um, I think uh, it's, so, uh, so k2 is a parameter numerical parameter for which we know all the numerical inputs to. So this is, I'm treating K2 as my known. And I think this is quite simple enough. I have this equation here, cancel out the A's. That's the normalization constant that, you know, will cancel out. So I need to solve for X. So I'm gonna imagine taking natural log of uh, the entire thing. Uh, when I do right hand side, which I'll write first, will give me minus k2x because natural log has canceled out exponential, you know, inverse function, uh, is equal to natural log of 0 0.36. And this actually um, gives me some confidence because this number is less than one, natural log of number less than one is gonna be negative. So minus signs will cancel out. So I get x is equal to, natural log of 0 0.36 divided by K2, or sorry, minus K2, uh, natural log of that's or negative, so I want minus sign there. Okay, um, I think for the purpose of plugging in the numbers, I will use Wolfram Alpha that uh, bypasses a lot of tedious and potentially mistake inducing <laughs> looking up of constants and whatnot. So I'll just do this in Wolfram Alpha. Natural log of 0 0.36 divided by minus k2. Okay, that's gonna be uh, uh, that's gonna be square root of that coefficient there. So it will be square root of two times. I said electron, right? Uh, yeah, electron of. Okay, I do need to know the particle mass. That's why I want to make sure it's electron so that I can say electron mass. And all from alpha will look it up in correct units. Uh, times, oh, I need to know my potential. It's uh, um, 3.9 EV, that's U naught minus um, 1.3 EV, that's my incident energy, 1.3 EV. Um, okay, that's the thing under square. Uh, let me do. Mm. Uh, let me just leave that alone. <laughs> so that's the thing under square root. And when I do the square root of h bar squared, I just get h bar. So divide by h bar. Okay, so that's the entirety of the denominator. Let me compute that. And um, I should get some answer. Yeah, and make sure that O from alpha has understood you correctly, natural log. It says log, but I'm pretty sure it means natural log as in log base e. Oh. Um, and this all looks fine. Okay, and I'm getting an answer in uh, in terms of 10 to minus 10 meters, 1.24 times 10 to minus 10 meters. And uh, the answer wanted here is in nanometers. So 1.24 times 10 to minus 10 meters, that should be 0 0.124 nanometers or times 10 to the minus nine meters. Okay, uh, let's make sure that I got that right. Good, I think. So let me line this all up. Where is this supposed to be? Hmm. 
Um, all right. <laughs> okay, so that's correct. So using the approximation that you are directed to use, this is the, um, the barrier width that you would estimate um, in order to get a dropping of the of the, the wave function amplitude to 0.36 of initial value. Now, this is not the tunneling probability because probability is related to the absolute value squared. So for the tunneling probability, you actually have to take this and then square it. Let me do that in a calculator, uh, 0.36 squared. So the tunneling probability that is associated with this width according to the approximations I'm making is 0 0.13 uh, or 13% of tunneling probability, 0 0.1, uh, let me just type in the whole thing, 296, uh, 296. This is where I'm telling you that uh, this is not actually the correct, correct result. So this uh, number that the system calculates for you is based on this uh, width, and um, and what the question is passing up to is that the correct result using this thickness would be 0 0.378. But your estimate, it's not too far off. You know, it's within a factor of three of the correct result. So if uh, what you wanted was um, intuitive order of magnitude estimate, if that's all you wanted, what we did here is perfectly fine. And it's much easier to understand in terms of you are thinking of this as, oh, so I have this exponential decay thing and I know I have some relationship to my tunneling probability and that's around here. And so let's cut the barrier off here. And that'll give me some level of tunneling probability that's uh, related to, um, um, something that's close to the actually correct result. But the, the amount of math involved in this estimate is at least on order of magnitude easier than the amount of math involved in what they do in this section, which again, I do recommend that you attempt to follow it on your own time, take a day. But, um, <laughs> um, but you know, it, uh, I, I don't think this uh, really builds a lot of intuitive feel for the solution. This is the kind of expression that you would put into a, a MATLAB or something like that and just to calculate the numerical value of and using it, use it in some modeling software. So, so that's a question 12. And I can imagine that some of the difficulty that people will face is that um, I'm basically telling you to calculate something that is incorrect, but incorrect, but easier to understand. Uh, so, oh, you know, maybe I'll do question 14. Uh, I got tired of recording today and I didn't really do question 14 in the recording. Uh, let me do it because uh, it's kind of easy enough to do it. Um, so, so let me do it. Um, so it says a beam of mono energizing protons with some energy falls on a potential barrier of some height, oh, that's a high, and of with 1.5 femtometer. I think a femto is 10 to the minus 15 meter. Wow, that is, uh, that's almost like a nuclear sized barrier, I think. What percentage of the beam is transmitted through the barrier? Okay. Um, and when you look at the hint, the hint will say, review the result. <laughs> and you may use the approximate result given in this. So this is the sense in which I'm saying that it's easy. Um, it's easy in the sense that transmission probability, there's an equation that actually gives that directly. So um, it's a matter of copying that equation and plugging in the correct numbers. <laughs> um, it's uh, what we sometimes refer to as plug and chug uh, question. And I, I don't mean to say the formulas here are in any sense simple. It is quite complicated formula. Uh, if I had to drive it from scratch, it would have take me a whole class session to drive it. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, but once you have the formula and um, the question told me I can use the approximate version, so I'm gonna use approximate version. Once you have the formula, then it's easy enough to plug in the numbers too. 
And uh, I'm gonna take care to copy down all the formulas I need. I need this one, um, which has all the parameters in terms of instant energy and the barrier height, e to the minus two beta, and L is the barrier width. And what I need that's not quite in this one formula is beta. Beta is defined elsewhere. It, it's defined in order to make the uh, formula writing here easier. So when I scroll up, um, beta should be defined up, uh, here it is. Beta is defined in terms of its square. So let me write that down. You just, just need the definition. So beta is gonna be, well, I'll write down beta squared. Beta squared is equal to 2m over h bar squared, u naught minus e. All right. So with those tools in hand, um, all I have to do is uh, let me go, um, I'm just gonna do this all from alpha because doing it in all from alpha will, uh, one, uh, eliminate possibility of a certain mistakes. Eliminate possibilities of certain mistakes and um, and just make things a lot easier and faster than looking at physical constants and doing all that stuff. So transmission probability is 16 times the incident energy to mega electron volt divided by, oh, let me not put in units here because E over U naught, the units will cancel out. So I'm gonna put in two divided by 20 times one minus again, two divided by 20 times exponential of minus two times. And here I'm just gonna type in what the beta should be. It's a square root of two times the mass of the particle. It's protons that are instant. So proton mass, um times uh oh, here i need to put in the units u naught 20 mev minus the instant energy uh, 2 mev divided by um oh let me do this i'm gonna close the square root and then divide by just the one factor of h bar and then times l um which is 1.5 femtometer, and I think all from alpha will just understand femtometer. Okay, that's close of exponential. I think that's all. Uh, let me press enter. Let's make sure that all from alpha correctly understood. Yeah, femtometer is fm. Yeah, okay, good. Um, all right. I, I thought Fermi was the same thing as femtometer. Uh, um, looks like it understood me correctly to MP, yeah, mega electron volt, reduce the Planck constant, it's okay. Um, yeah, it says the result is 0 0.088. So in percentage terms, it should be 8.8%. So again, easy question because all you have to do is plug in, in the numbers. But yeah, so this is why I asked the question 12 because um, I, I fully believe everyone in the class is capable of looking up the formulas and then plugging the numbers. Um, what I feel like you might miss out on is gaining some level of intuition for this tunneling phenomenon, if uh, that's all that you have to do. Um, 